eight. More than half of us in the UK are affected by a skin condition every year. But health experts say the mental impact of living with diseases such as acne or psoriasis may not be fully understood. A three-year study has found that young people in particular are often finding their mental and physical health suffers. Suicide. Jane McCubbin has been to meet one young woman who says acne ruled her life. For 10 years, heavy makeup was Sarah's mask. It didn't necessarily look good, but anything was better than masking being on show. The first thing that I thought of in the morning was about my skin. So I'd put my hands to my face and check over my skin, and I'd be able to tell from doing that whether it was a good day or a bad day. It ruled my life. No pictures exist of how bad Sarah's skin was. She wouldn't allow any to be taken. Every year, 54% of the population is affected by a skin condition. Conditions like acne, like psoriasis, like eczema. 85% of those sufferers say they suffer psychological effects as well. It's linked to low self-esteem, self-harm, even suicide. It was really distressing. It was a very, very difficult time in her life. Her family understand this all too well. My dad had psoriasis, has psoriasis still, um, and had it very badly as a young man, and he did have a nervous breakdown. But now Sarah is taking part in a new study. Its aim is to help sufferers cope better with more psychological support. Do you feel that if you'd had an opportunity to do that kind of thing when you were 14, 15, 16, it would have made a big difference? Yeah, I wish. I wish I would have had that opportunity. With people my age that I could identify with, talking in my sort of language, um, I wish I'd have had that chance, yeah. Sarah Fletcher there, ending that report by Jane McCubbin. Well, we're joined now by Dr. Christine Bundy from the University of Manchester, who worked on that study about the psychological effects of living with a skin condition, and the comedian Toby Haydock, who lives with psoriasis. Good morning to you both. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Toby, I imagine that um, piece was quite resonant for you in, in many sense, because you've, you, you have psoriasis. Yeah. Um, experienced comments while you've been performing oh about, yes about I, I, your psoriasis yeah i was i was once in a play where um i had to i was i was just background scenery in one in one scene where i, I just had ragged trousers on and a blanket around me so i was topless it was brings the fantasy and um <laughs> and halfway through i got a a, a a throat infection and psoriasis tends to be uh, precipitated by because you're it's it's not a skin condition it's an autoimmune uh, thing so if i thought if you get a sore throat your immune system targets the throat. Mine just goes, I don't know what to do. And my skin had a massive outbreak. And um, just as I came off from the scene, a, a bloke sitting there, so I was quite close to the audience, um, turned to his wife and said, oh, God, that was horrible. Oh, that's not catching. And I, you know, I knew, he knew that I knew that he could hear me. And I, it wasn't so much the fact that he was um, appalled by it. It was the fact that he felt comfortable enough to say it within earshot of me. Well, so you've gone into a, a job which is performing in public. Yes. I mean, you're, you're clearly very confident talking about it here, but how, what about the effect maybe earlier on when you were younger? How's, how has it affected you more generally? Because one of the things we're talking about here in this report is the impact it can have on people. Well, why? Yeah, I mean, it's a condition that makes you feel not terribly good about yourself. So, yes, why would somebody with low self-esteem do a job which requires the vocal affirmation of total strangers on a nightly basis? You tell me, you know, it's, it, it, it is, uh, you know, I guess we all have ways of dealing with how we feel that performance is, a, you know, an age-old way of, of overcoming that. Psychologically, though, when you heard that comment, from that member of the audience. I mean, are you, do, you, do you think you're quite robust and, and you can bat that off? Or no, it's hard, no, no. Because it adds a different element to having a condition such as psoriasis, doesn't it? Yes, it wasn't the fact, it, it was more the fact that he, he, he felt that sort of common humanity was not something mm. that I, uh, I was necessarily deserved anymore because I looked repellent. And this is the problem, Christine, isn't mm. it? When people perhaps go to their GP mm -hmm. or often they, they feel, well, I'm going to be treated for the condition, mm -hmm. but actually there's more to it than that. Yes. So whose responsibility is it? Is it? Because it's hard enough for the patient to say, exactly. I need my psoriasis treated yes. or eczema, to then say, and I feel awful, I feel yes. rubbish about this, yes. it's making me feel bad. That's right. It's incredibly difficult when you're living with a very visible skin condition that people comment on to then go forward and ask for additional help 
for it. And I think that we have a job of work to do with general practitioners in particular because they don't see some of the psychological effects very easily to raise awareness with them about how awful it is for a proportion of people living with skin conditions. Not everybody with a skin condition doesn't cope very well. Most people do. But there's a significant proportion, about a third of people, who don't cope at all well. And that's the group of people who are very vulnerable. As Toby said, we need to encourage them to develop the coping skills that will enable them to go out into the world, face it, and manage it in initially, front it off, but then to internalize some of those feelings and increase their self-esteem. Why do you think it is, that Toby, the description Toby gave, of why people feel it's okay? to say things out loud in that situation yeah. or, or just make them obvious in their actions? Well, who knows? I think one of the difficulties is nobody sets out to be particularly unpleasant or difficult, but it's, it's almost like a vocal tick. It's something that they just exclaim when they see because they're not used to seeing it, because they are fearful of it, and their reaction is to comment on it. But what we need to do with the campaigns that both Toby and I are involved with and the shout-out campaign that we're running in Manchester is to raise awareness across the board with the general public, with people living with a skin condition themselves, and medical practitioners particularly the GPs, that it, it is their responsibility to ask patients and how well are you coping with this condition? How is it having an effect on your life? Did anyone ever ask you, Toby, from the medical profession? Yes, it took about 25 years and I remember, and this is partially what brought me into contact with Dr. Bundy, was I remember the first time I was told by a consultant, it's not acceptable that you live like this because I've lived with it for 25 years it, with the pain and the physical discomfort and the outward manifestation of it. And I just had creams and creams to, to deal with the, you know, the results of it. And I went to see this brilliant consultant who said, oh, no, you, we can manage this. And it was like suddenly this huge weight lifted off my shoulder. And I've seen a dermopsychologist as well and an understanding. Because there's that thing of people go, oh, is it stress-related as a sort of all correct? But I used to sort of think, well, no, that's just nonsense. Why would my, how I feel inside affect my skin? And then this psychologist, well, um, what do you do when you get scared? I said, oh, I get goosebumps. Said, what do you do when you're embarrassed? Oh, I blush. Yeah, of course, it's all tied in mm. psychologically. And, and when you can start to unpick that and understand it, um, well, understanding is all, and then it's not in control of you. Mm. Uh, very interesting. Thanks. Thank you so much uh, for sharing your thoughts with us. Thank you. Pleasure. Thank you. Thank you. Of course, you can get more information. Find out where to get support online at the British Skin Foundation. Uh, let's find out what's happening on the Victoria Derbyshire programme.